Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this morning. Be with us, Lord, as we continuously learn about what love is. God, that it will not just be knowledge in our head, but something that we do using our hands, mind, feet, heart, finance. And we could say, I love you in an action. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We are deeply going into one verse and we'll finish 1 Corinthians 13, 4 today. As the King James Version says, charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. For modern people like us, it's quite um, difficult to understand. So this is World English Bible. Love is patient and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not brag. It is not proud. We must, New Testament reads, love is patient and kind. Love knows neither envy nor jealousy. Love is not forward and self-assertive, nor boastful and conceited. I'm looking at two words. One is being boastful, does not boast, brag, vaunt, to vaunt myself. Who, 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 who speaks like that, right? Oh, don't vaunt yourself. I'm like, huh? Hello? But uh, Benson Commentary writes, acted not rashly or vaunt not itself. He writes, the lover of God and mankind does not hastily condemn anyone, never passes a severe sentence on slight or sudden view of things nor does he act or behave in a violent, headstrong, or pre precipitate manner. Hmm. So in olden days, I guess, they used the word vaunt quite normally, regularly, because uh, pulpit commentary also uh, liked the word vaunt. So he says, vaunt not itself. The meaning would probably be most clearly, uh, most nearly expressed by the so, uh, colloquialism, colloquialism does not show up. You know, oh, God, it's just show up, right? Well, the love does not do that. It does not, for instance, do its alms before men to be seen of them. Matthew 6 1. Remember of the hypocrites? Look at what these hypocrites are doing, right? They give money publicly show up, goes on the new, six o'clock news, tell the world how much they gave, on and on. Bragging, where, why does, where does bragging stems from? Well, according to the te text we just read, from proud, love does not brag because it is not proud, not proud, blowing, inflate. So that's why King James says, puffed off. Bragging is blowing up. Ego blown up. Self inflated. Not real. James Chang writes in his commentary, if you really love, you do not boast. One who love is not proud. Using Proverbs 13.10, where there is strife, there is pride. Where there is strife, oh, this is so good. Proverbs 13, 10. Where there is strife, guess what? Why people fight? Because of their ego. When there is pride, there is conflict and problem occur. All relationship problem is in the world starts from pride. In other words, pride is the root of all problems, right? That's what angel Lucifer said. I'll go up in heaven and I'll raise my throne above all the stars in heaven. I'll go up to the highest cloud and compare myself with the highest one, God. 
and he became prideful. Then he was thrown down from heaven, became Satan, Satan himself. Ooh. When Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were told that when you eat of the fruit, and this Satana is now deceiving God's creatures. When you eat of this fruit, Eve, your eyes will open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And boom, the pride went into her. Okay, yeah, why not? I'm created in God's image. I feel like God sometimes. Well, James Cheng writes, oftentimes married couples conflict seems to be something other than pride, but in reality, pride and ego is the root of the problem. We should never forget this, right? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times after a fight, uh, just sometimes few hours later, sometimes few days later, like what was that fight about? most many many times it's just our ego if we die to ourselves uh, it would not be a problem number one so what I, what is this pride james chang writes if you are prideful you can misunderstand if you're puffed up full of yourself what happens well if we have pride we do not listen to others why because we think we already know what the other person will say, we know the answer, we're better than them. Right? Because of that, we do not listen. Right? So Matthew 7, 5, Jesus says, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eyes. Pride makes all of us hypocrite. You know, hypocrisy, is a fruit of superiority complex. If you have an inferiority complex, you don't, it does not normally lead to being a hypocrite. What, what is this plank in this eyes in this verse says? It's the pride of Pharisees. See, they are basically saying, I have more faith than you. I live more clean life. I live more religious life. I fast twice a week, twice to two days a week. I didn't, I, do better than you. I know more than you. I'm more knowledgeable. I got more credentials. I got PhD. So I can judge you. See, pride is this kind of thinking. But Jesus said, well, you must remove that pride plank out of your eyes so that you can see clearly. In order to understand each other and be able to judge correctly, we must get rid of our prideful attitude, thoughts, and this, you know, stuff. Number two, pride makes people fight. Galatians 5.26 says, let us not become considered provoking and envying each other. Oh, that's a big one. Galatians 5.26, Paul says, why, why, why do we have this conflict? Provoking fight. Because, as I said already, because I'm better than you. I know better than you. I should be better. And, and you're going against my advice, you're going against my thought, you're going against my opinion, you're going against my theory. So, well, we fight. When two people who are, have strong pride and meet and talk, they don't want to lose. They huff and puff over trivial things. Men's her, heroic talks are a good example. There is no one who was not successful in bygone days. <laughs> Man, when I was young, you know what I did? You know, right after college, you know who I was? Well, what does that mean now, sir? You know, um, this pride. I remember one of my uh, disciples said, you know why my mom and dad divorced years ago? I said, why? Well, he said, I remember clearly he was in high school or something or junior high, I think it was high school. Yeah, high school. He was an high school student. And mom and dad come from Korea and they bought American watermelon. Korean watermelon is round with stripes going top to bottom. 
American watermelon is long, right? And a uh, line going top to bottom, but more vertically than horizontally. So mom and dad came to America and they're talking about how to cut the watermelon. And basically that trivial fight led to divorce. <laughs> and so of course, uh, that it's, it's just a manifestation of all the years of conflict and misunderstanding and basically, but my disciple was saying that I can't believe my parents divorced fighting over which way to cut American watermelon. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, see, being proud, one cannot have an intimate relationship. It is not easy to be close to proud people. Unconscious mind of person who boasts a lot has fear of rejection. What does it mean? The person who boasts and is arrogant has fault that others don't know about. He does not want to be revealed for fear that people will reject and disregard him. Is that true in your life? Wow. Mm. Something to think about. But how do others feel? By wearing a mask and disguising oneself, people feel a sense of distance. One cannot have a close relationship with a person who overly boasts instead of being comfortable as he is. Have you met someone like that? Yeah. I think I've been accused of that. I think, I know my brothers and sister may be listening, but I know they are, but <laughs> at least sisters. Um, I think the old family has that. I think my dad had this extreme superiority inferiority complex. He was a well-established doctor in Korea, came and became a manual laborer with really low class people doing our manual labor. And he was the chief editor of anti-government newspaper agency, but he wasn't making money. Mom wasn't happy felt inferior, at the same time superior. He was intellect with two PhD, but he was a manual labor and just he could, it was all mixed up. So then a lot of times he will just, a lot of BS about who he was. And a lot of it was true, but a lot of it was just puffed up stuff. And so he couldn't really become intimate with people, including my mom. So, and, and the children, and, and my regret is that, boy, if I know what I know now, that I probably wrote a book for him because he has so much to offer. Now I cannot track back all his editorial paper he did. I just cannot get them. So I don't know what his thinking was. So anyways, they boast, they brag, because they are not very comfortable with themselves. Third, know that all things are from God and by his grace. What, what does it mean? Paul's confession, Paul as confesses, acknowledge that all that I am now is made from God. Without the help of God, his grace and his current, the, the current I, myself, my business, my career, my family, my all are impossible. It is only possible because God allowed it. If you really humble yourself and see reality as it is and realize, man, God could take me out just like that, you know, 10 years ago in that accident or, you know, I oh, just like that, you know, there's, you're basically, you could die today if it's not God's grace. You know, you could die on the freeway today, especially riders, right? It's truly, truly, it's God. And, and, and knowing that, then, you would really humble yourself. First Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive from God? Right? Are you proud? Do you tell yourself, well, I'm going to build all these barns and I'm going to put up all these harvests and I'm going to be married for the next 10 years and you fool, Bible says. If God takes your life tonight, who made use of all your possessions? If we treat our spouse, friends, and brothers in Christ with this attitude, we can love them without 
cry. I said, amen to that. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, guys. <sighs> Let's not be proud. <laughs> Let's humble ourselves. Say that, God, everything I receive from you, naked I come, naked I'll go. I'll worship the Lord of my salvation. Amen. Lord bless you. Let's love somebody in Jesus' name today.